right now i will be starting with law of torts and in this session i'll try to introduce law of torts for you and will give you certain general defenses now before we do law of torts again thoda sa give you a brief ki jo law hote hain wo kaise develop hua it was not you know in a day that a law was developed the law has gone through its own series of evolution to be developed now there are certain laws which are codified like indian penal code or the indian contracts act these are codified laws ki section 1 ye kehta hai section 2 ye kehta hai section 3 ye kehta hai whereas law of tort is not a codified law theek hai i'll tell you ki kyu law law of codified law tort codified law kyu nahi hai i'll explain it to you now ab ye jo law india mein jo bhi laws hum log follow karte hain those are mostly common laws which jo bhi we follow because if you if you go back in history you would realize that britishers had ruled india for a very long period of time while they were ruling india they were trying to slowly introduce their legal system as well into india now that legal system was popularly known as common law system so law of tort jo hai jo india mein aaj follow karte hain wo common law system ka hi part hai ab ye law jo tha ye judgment laws hai yani ki अगर दो पार्टीज के बीच में कोई डिस्प्यूट होता था तो वो कोर्ट में जाते थे कोर्ट उस डिस्प्यूट को रिजॉल्व कर देता था तो वो बन गया लॉ कॉमन लॉ जो है उसी से फिर हम लोग ने कोडिफाइड लॉज भी डेवलप किए उसी से हमने लॉ ऑफ टॉट भी डेवलप किया वेर एज लॉ ऑफ टॉट जो है वो कोडिफाइड लॉ का शेप नहीं लिया वो कॉन्सेप्ट का शेप लिया इसलिए यहाँ पे जब हर्ष इनिशली ही आ, said ki na whether it is law of tort or law of torts so there were two theories given one given by a scholar salmond and another by winfield salmond said that the subject should be called law of torts and winfield said that the subject should be called law of tort salmond ka view ye tha ki different categories of wrongs honge jo wrongs ko hum log tort manenge वेर एज विनफील्ड का कहना था क्या जितने भी रॉन्ग्स है वो सबको एक साथ ले ले और एक ही नाम दे दे लॉ ऑफ टॉट तो नॉन क्वेश्चन मीन सो लेट मी टेल यू टॉट जो है या लॉ में बहुत सारे ऐसे टर्म्स तुम लोग पढ़ोगे इन ड्यू कोर्स ऑफ प्रिपरेशन विच वुड बी बेस्ड ऑन लैटिन मैक्सिम्स और लैटिन टर्म्स सो टॉट इज बेसिकली अ लैटिन टर्म विच मीन्स which means uh, sorry a tort has been derived from a latin term tortum which means twisted so basically a conduct that is twisted wrong not straight or unlawful is known as tort if you if you wish you can write it as a note as well that any conduct that is twisted wrong not straight or unlawful is known as tort so law kya kehta hai law says do not violate legal right of a person or or the right member of the society theek hai ki agar kisi bhi member of the society ka legal right violate hua hai to fir usko us violation of that legal right the person should have some legal remedy in the court like for example i have a house it is a private house i would not want a person Uh, i would not want an unauthorized person to enter my house now if an unauthorized person has entered my house it is a violation of my privacy so now if a uh, and if it is a violation of my privacy then don't you think that we should have some legal remedy now where do we find those legal remedy so there are certain offenses or certain wrongs jiski legal remedy jo hai hame law of torts ke andar mein milegi so now law of tort deals with the remedies or you know deals or claims by the private persons against another theek hai so uh, i hope ki this much this part must be clear by you as of now the law of tort hota kya hai law of tort has been derived from the latin term tortum which means twisted any conduct which is twisted wrong or which is violating the legal right of a particular person then the remedy lies under the law of tort now so definition of tort and i would suggest if you can make notes with me definition of tort a tort is a civil wrong for which 
one can get unliquidated damages a tort is a civil wrong for which you get unliquidated damages okay now civil wrong kya hota hai civil wrong ye jo definition hai isme humne likha ki a tort is a civil wrong for which you get unliquidated damages so what is a civil wrong a civil wrong is committing an injury which violates right civil wrong is committing an injury which violates the legal right of a person so that is known as civil wrong an injury which is violating the legal right of a person it is known as civil wrong now the definition also talks about unliquidated damages so there are two types of compensation which are generally given whenever a, you know whenever a legal right of a person is damaged one is liquidated damage another is unliquidated damage now liquidated damage kya hota hai when the quantum of the damage or the quantum of the compensation is decided before hand then it is liquidated damage like for example x and y enter into a contract for providing t-shirts and those t-shirts were to be worn on republic day now y had to deliver the t-shirt to x y delayed because of which x could not give his students to wear those t-shirts on republic day performance now the now x has suffered loss so yahan pe the loss suffered by x is very clear as in usne kitne amount of money pay kiya hoga for the t-shirt या फिर उस टी शर्ट नहीं पहनने के कारण अगर उस एक्स को इमीडिएटली किसी और शॉप से जाकर के टी शर्ट प्रोक्योर करने पड़े होंगे वट एवर बी देश सो दी क्वांटम ऑफ दी लॉस कुड बी इजली असर्टेड सो वहां पे क्या हो या फिर कॉन्ट्रैक्ट का जो नेचर होगा कॉन्ट्रैक्ट में ही प्रायरली लिखा रहता है कई बार कि अगर पार्टी फेल की अपने ऑब्लिगेशन को फुलफिल करने के लिए तो फिर वहां पे X Y अमाउंट होगा वो अमाउंट को हमें पे करना पड़ेगा वो हमें कॉम्पनसेशन पे करना पड़ेगा तब जब तो ऐसा सिचुएशन जहां पे हमें कॉम्पनसेशन के बारे में पहले से ही पता है वैसे सिचुएशन को हम कहते हैं वैसे वैसे सिचुएशन में जब हमें डैमेजेस पे करना होता है तो बी से इट इज अ लिक्विडेटेड डैमेजेस दैट इज द डैमेजेस द क्वांटम ऑफ द डैमेजेस और द कॉम्पनसेशन इज डिसाइडेड और इजी टू बी असर्टेन Whereas in tort we say unliquidated damages because अब यहाँ पे क्या होता है ना यहाँ पे क्या होता है unliquidated damages में tort में क्या होता है कि the money equivalent to the damage suffered as a result of the injury cannot be determined and it has to be decided by the court. Reason being क्या है कि tort में क्या है कि भाई आपका legal right का violation होगा और जब आपका legal right का violation होगा तो उस के वायलेशन की जो इंटेंसिटी होगी उसके हिसाब से आपका कॉम्पनसेशन को डिसाइड किया जाएगा नॉ फॉर एग्जांपल वेरी बेसिक एग्जांपल लेट मी गिव यू कि किसी का घर है और वो बंदा अपने घर के विंडो पेन पे विंडो सेल पे एक फ्लॉप आउट रखा नॉ एज अ कॉमन पर्सन कॉमन रिजनेबल मैन यू शुड कीप दर्सन शुड है पेन के ऊपर फ्लॉप आउट इन अनर दैट इट शुड नॉट फॉल ऑन समन हेल्थ बट ही वॉज वेरी नेग्लिजेंट वाई डूइंग सो एंड ही कैप्ट इट ऑन दज ऑफ द विंडो सेल्फ ड्यू टू ड्यू टू सम रीजन दॉज अ पास बाई वॉज गोइंग ऑन द रोड विंड ब्लू एंड ऑल ऑफ अ सडन द फ्लॉप आउट फेल ऑन द पास बाईज हेड नॉट द पास बाई सफर्ड सडन इंजुरी now not different situations can happen in one situation the pedestrian would have suffered minor injury in another situation it is possible that the person might have suffered certain five seven stitches in a third there could be a third possibility wherein the person would have suffered injury and he would have he would have slipped into coma the fourth situation would be that the that the injury suffered the head injury suffered was of such such high gravity that the person collapsed and died so there are four to five situations which can happen by one incident so now think as a common reasonable man 
that whether the compensation in all the situation should have been given the same or it should have it should be dependent upon the different intense intensity of the legal damage suffered or the injury suffered now think for yourself what should happen you can uh, you can on uh, kids you can answer the questions on the chat box yeah please tell me in the in the four probabilities or situations which we gave in which of this do you think that the compensation to be provided should be the same in all the four situations or it would differ depending upon the intensity or the gravity of the injury suffered can someone answer it for me now shreya has said that it would differ upon the intensity nitin also has nitin has also said that it differs basis of the intensity so rightly said ki whatever the amount of gravity of the loss or the damage is going to determine the dam it is going to determine the compensation so therefore in law of tort the compensation is not pre decided rather it is decided by the court depending upon the gravity of the situation therefore in the definition when we read that the a tort is a civil wrong for which one gets unliquidated damages so that is what we mean by an unliquidated damages i hope that uh, it is uh, clear for you uh, on this point sir uh, uh, kids uh, there was one particular question with respect to assertion and reason on the very point which sir has uh, taught us a while back uh, the assertion and reason was on this particular point unliquidated damage itself the year in which you can find that particular question is clad 2012 Again, in the same year, there was another question with respect to the same proposition being uh, uh, talked about. That is the unliquidated damages. Sir, so started with uh, the meaning of tort, and yes, uh, there has been uh, thrice in a law entrance examination. Uh, they have asked what is the meaning of the word Latin verb tortum, which the uh, sir has told us it means twisted or not straight. So remember that particular term. Remember about the unliquidated damage part, because uh, it it was asked in uh, assertion and in the form of assertion and reason in CLAT 2012. in 2012 again another question was there on the basis of the facts and uh, principle based one another uh, another year in 2015 uh, uh, there was another question with respect to the same point uh symbiosis law uh, uh, in slack they have been asking these kind of questions within the part of uh, legal knowledge uh, spectrum so uh, keep a uh, keep a note of these things also yes sir okay so now see for you guys i am writing certain things in the chat box if you can just uh, uh, keep uh, open and read so there was a first word which i wrote like see there certain terminologies which you know while you are so there is a question which has come up sir can there be any tort for harm of mental health so there are torts which which can cover mental health or a fear caused in the mind there are certain certain there there are definitely certain thoughts like if 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 uh, uh, you know a mental health issue has been caused because of falsely accusing a person or a false filing of case against a person so in that there is a tort remedy under defamation or malicious prosecution or if if negligence has been carried out by a person while doing certain activity because of which you have suffered some kind of loss so wahan pe negligence ka bhi tort ban sakta hai so it's the law of tort does provide remedy for mental health issues as well uh, i also think uh, sort of uh, uh, sir ashwin sir there is something called nervous shock also which uh, nervous, in which nervous we, shock which, which which comes under uh, the tort uh, itself and there is there is this mental element part that we have been reading around that how how does somebody malicious, malicious prosecution yeah. assault all are part of you know uh, mental health can be interpreted with respect to remedy of mental health as well uh, shreya so the, you can uh, you can uh, uh, note these particular pointers and uh, you should uh, actually read about this particular topics as well especially when it comes down to the nervous shock part uh, yes what do you say so now few few certain terminologies let me explain sue s u e sue which means to take a legal action you would always you must have always heard i'll sue you in the court so what do you mean by the term sue so means to take legal action against a person now the person who files the case is known as plaintiff in law of tort and also in certain other civil laws as well the person against whom 
the case is filed is known as defendant uh, defendant is a person against whom a case is filed not damage damage means substantial loss or harm damages means compensation so when you take a legal action against a person it is known as sue when you the person who files the case or claims any remedy is known as a is known as a plaintiff the person against whom the case is filed or remedy is asked is known as defendant the loss or harm suffered is known as damage the compensation asked is known as damages now there is a question which has come up can this statement that i sue in court can be considered as a verbal legal notice to the other party not 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 as such i sue in a court will not be considered as a uh, as a legal notice a valid legal notice is something else yeah that is but a part of procedural not, law not a part of with respect to this particular yeah but but that does not mean that if you say someone that i am going to sue you in the court of law and you cannot that person you can go and that person okay so now we have done the definition of tort we have done the the meaning of uh, civil wrong we have done the meaning of unliquidated damages we have seen certain important terminologies with respect to uh, uh, to torts now ek cheez jab hum log dekhte hain before we begin further is that how is law of tort different from law of crime that is that has to be seen because there are certain law of torts ke offenses civil wrong jo ki crime mein bhi hai jaise ki defamation yeah yeah tell me harsh uh, uh, so uh, before we move on to this particular part uh, kids uh, there has been uh, the, part, uh, the the sir just told us about the damage uh, the definition of damages that they are monetary compensation for violation of right to the extent that money can correct the violation to that end uh, you must remember that there is a very famous case ashby uh, ashby versus white based on this particular case a lot of times they have asked questions with respect to a, a person a indian citizen having a right to vote was not allowed to cast vote so uh, read this particular read this particular question because this has been in a repetitive format it has been asked in clat 2013 clat 2015 and it has uh, figured it, it it also appeared in other law in this examination over to you sir so ashby versus white and gloucester grammar school cases which which anyways i'll be also be discussing uh, uh, under you know injuria sine damna mem damna sine injuria's concept so right now let us see the difference between tort and a criminal law because there are certain tort laws certain offenses of civil wrong under tort which by which you might find place under the criminal law as well for example defamation is a part of your tort law there is also a provision for criminal defamation trespass is a part of your tort law you, you might you in ipc you, you would also see a criminal trespass also as a you know different offense so point here is that one thing which need which 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 you need to understand at this juncture is that there are certain provisions or there are certain remedies available in the law which might not be just be given in one particular law but it can also find place in another law as well so now it is up to the plaintiff yani the person who is suing or the person who is asking for remedy or the person who is claiming as to he wants to invoke which particular law you know you if the remedy is given if suppose the remedy is provided in two laws like for example law of tort also in law of crimes so now it is up to you that you want to seek remedy under which law if you have decided to seek remedy in law of tort then you will let go of the you know the benefit which you would have got by seeking remedy in crime law you cannot seek remedy in both the laws in a general sense sometimes clubbing of situations can also happen but that is more of a practical situation not for relevant for your preparation stage or as for your clat examination as of now so now let us now see 
the difference between the law of tort and law of crimes so so wrongs which are less serious or which are private wrongs are basically considered to be civil wrongs under law of tort wrongs which are more serious or which are public wrongs are you know mostly characterized under criminal law there is a question by nitin in defamation we can simultaneously file civil and criminal case no we cannot simultaneously file civil or criminal case we can file a civil case or a criminal case we can if we have filed a civil case we can convert the civil case into the criminal case or we have filed a criminal case we can convert the criminal case to a civil case but we cannot simultaneously file or seek remedy both under civil law as well as criminal law that is not going to happen now the second difference between law of torts and law of crime is that when wrongs are committed against individual private individuals or private persons or there is a private wrong then wo law of tort hota hai when the wrong is committed against the public to wo hota hai crime ke andar for example you would have seen nirbhaya versus state you know murder ka case mein x versus the state so whenever an offense under crime has happened it is considered to be an offense against the public at large so wo de, jo, so which means that the offenses which are much more severe or grave in nature wo offenses ko hum log criminal offenses mante hain offenses which is which is non serious is serious in nature and non criminal in nature usko hum log law of torts mein mante hain also keep in mind for law of crime यानी क्रिमिनल लॉ को इंटरप्रेट करने के लिए इंटेंशन का होना बहुत जरूरी है लॉ ऑफ टॉट में टॉर्चियस लॉ के अंदर इंटेंशन का होना जरूरी नहीं है बट फॉर डिफॉर्मेशन एंड मलिशियस प्रोसिक्यूशन वहां पे इंटेंशन देखा जाता है अदरवाइज किसी भी टॉट लॉ में हम इंटेंशन उतना प्राइमरी इंपॉर्टेंस नहीं रखता है वेर एज क्रिमिनल लॉ में इंटेंशन का होना मैंडेटरी है नौ there is a question by murtuza nurani with respect to whether a defamation can be filed or should be filed under civil law or criminal law which is preferable see it depends upon the person it's a very subjective question it depends upon the person under which law the person wants to seek remedy if you if you want to willingly harass the person a criminal remedy will make more sense because you will have the person will have to come to the court quite often if you just want compensation and do away with the case at a at a faster speed then a civil remedy will be preferred so it totally depends upon the person who is willing to seek remedy okay there is another question if electricity officials do trespass in night to anyone's property not by main gate but by roof will it be criminal trespass when they do not have any order or don't any entry in office required a normal checking of area see now this question electricity officials ke bare mein baat ho rahi hai aur unke related trespass ki baat ho rahi hai theek hai so i will for the time being put this question on hold because yahan pe interpretation jo hogi wo hame ye bhi dekhna hai ki electricity official jo hai agar wo electricity officials government yani ki state employed officials hai और अगर हम और उनके लिए हम ट्रेसपास की बात करते हैं तो फिर वहां पे हम उनका सॉवरेन एंड नॉन सॉवरेन फंक्शन का सिचुएशन देखना पड़ेगा जो कि हम लोग वाइकेरियस लाइब्रेटी के टॉपिक में पढ़ेंगे अगर हम लोग इन नॉर्मल पैरलेंस में बात करें तो रात हो या दिन हो कोई भी अगर आपके प्रॉपर्टी में एंटर किया है तो ट्रेसपास तो होगा अब आप क्रिमिनल ट्रेसपास में रेमेडी ले सकते हैं या फिर आप सिविल ट्रेसपास में भी रेमेडी ले सकते हैं ऐसा लॉ ऑफ टॉट में ऐसा कहीं पे भी स्पेसिफिकली मेंशन नहीं है कि अगर दिन में ट्रेसपास होगा तो ही लॉ ऑफ टॉट में रेमेडी होगी और रात में ट्रेसपास होगा तो लॉ ऑफ टॉट में रेमेडी तो लॉ ऑफ क्राइम में रेमेडी होगी ऐसा कहीं पे स्पेसिफिकली मैंशन लॉ ऑफ टॉट में नहीं है सो अगेन यहाँ पे भी डिपेंड करेगा अपॉन दी प्लेटिव हु इज ट्राइंग टू सीक रेमेडी नॉ विथ रेस्पेक्ट टू दी now with respect to the uh, the liability of the electricity official we will have to see that the electricity official was working in a sovereign or a non sovereign capacity and on the basis of all that 
the answer would depend so if you can hold on this question for the further topic so maybe a little more clarity can come theek hai so should so no again abhishek has said but the government of state has cleared that no in entrance will be conducted after the sunset and the before sunrise so that is there again i am telling you wait let us let us come let us first understand ki what is the sovereign function and what is the non sovereign function and and in light of that let us then see ki whether trespass will happen or whether a criminal trespass will happen or whether a civil trespass will happen so please wait for a while we will discuss this question abhishek uh, uh, we will uh, when we will go ahead with this particular webinars in the law talks uh, uh, with the sessions uh, ahead of this you can ask this particular question uh, i will remember this and i will ask it to the speaker on that given day rather today we are covering the basics of the tort law and here and if we uh, uh, if we go across to a particular topic area then uh, we will not be able to finish off this basic part so you yeah. can hold on to this particular question so yeah. that's, that's exactly my point is that now let us now that we are doing tort now let us do it topic wise and the relevant questions with respect to those topics will be addressed when we are doing those topics otherwise you know it will be the flow of the you know the discussion will get disturbed so now again i'll just uh, uh, recap for you what is the difference between law of tort and the law of crime so first difference is that a uh, offense of less severe or less serious in nature where is in crime the offenses are more serious in nature law of torts where the offenses wrongs are committed against private individuals or private wrongs whereas in law of crime the wrongs are committed against the public or public wrong in dam the damages in law of tort is uh, is generally in form of compensation whereas in law of crime the damages could be in form of imprisonment fine or both in law of tort the injured party himself has to sue or seek seek remedy whereas in law of crime the injured party may not himself have to sue or seek remedy the state will sue on his behalf okay so ye ek broad difference tha between law of tort and law of crime now ab jab hum log aage badhenge so ek important case law let us discuss now now when we proceed further one important case law which i want to discuss with you is is of donald versus stevenson now this donald versus stevenson is a very important case and right now i will concentrate on one particular aspect of this case which is the concept of neighbor which was derived from this case this case has also various other interpretations which we'll see during the course of the session now in donald versus stevenson what had happened was that a person had gone to a restaurant and so basically a women a woman went to a restaurant and she bought a bottle of ginger beer manufactured by the dependents and the stevensons she a woman went to a restaurant she ordered a can anyone mention the case law in chat section i will write the case law yes sir uh, this is a very very important can donosh versus stevenson so in this case it went to a restaurant with a woman and brought up what and bought a bottle of ginger beer manufactured by the defendants the woman the woman consumed part of the contents and rest part she poured in the glass while she poured the rest of the part in the glass she observed the composed body of a snail in it the woman brought action against the manufacturer for negligence that by drinking it she contracted serious illness now i will repeat the part for you again that a woman, that someone went to a restaurant ordered a ginger beer while the person was having the ginger beer through the bottle did not notice anything the remaining part of the ginger beer was poured in a glass while the ginger beer was poured in the glass a decomposed body of a snail was witnessed now because of consuming that ginger beer the woman fell sick now she wanted to sue the manufacturer for negligence under tort 
so yaha and the restaurant owner as well so the issue arose that whether the manufacturer or the restaurant owner will be held liable for negligence or not so in this landmark case which is which which in various entrance examination this case will be there with something to stand but the essence of this case will be there so in this landmark case the concept of neighbor was decided or you know was defined by the court now as a common layman what do you mean by your neighbor a neighbor is a person who lives nearby like you live in a locality the person next to your house is your neighbor that's that's what we mean by neighbor but in law of tort a neighbor is a person who is in close proximity to you in a given period of time for example if you are riding a bike on the road so the people on the road nearby are your neighbor if you are watching a movie in a movie theater the people in the movie theater you are sitting nearby are your neighbor so you owe a duty to your neighbor so this is what this was one thing which was decided in this course uh, this in this case sorry and another thing was that whether manu and then ab ye yahan pe ek aur bahut important cheez decide hua ki tort law mein liable kaun hota hai theek hai who is liable under the tort law and and that person is liable to whom to who and whom were the two things which were decided in this case so whom the neighbor the person in the close proximity or the person who is the beneficiary or the person to him you know the thing is going down so wo wo whom hai jo ki jiske liye like jo ki jiske against liability aapki ho ban sakti hai now who who will be liable so so in the law of tort it says that every person owes a duty of care towards another person and when that duty of care is breached then an offence under the tort law arises so this is the who so who is this? who will be liable the person who owes a duty of care and if that duty of care is breached resulting in legal injury then that person will be held liable not to whom the person will be liable neighbor and we have i have explained you who the neighbor is not just put it in the first example which we did that you had put a flower pot on the window pane and you had put it in a very negligent manner that you know even a slight wind is capable enough to make it fall and it fell on someone's head so there was a duty of care which you should have there was a duty of care which you should have observed while putting the flower pot on the window pane but you were negligent in putting it so because of your negligence someone else suffered the injury not that now who is that someone else is the person at that moment of time who was crossing near crossing through the window pane it could be your family member it could be someone who has come to the locality for the first time so wo neighbor hai aap class jaate ho class mein jo aapke aas pass baitha hai wo aapka neighbor hai so that is what you know that is the whom which was decided in the donak versus stevenson case and the who is the person who owes a duty of care and he has breached that duty of care because of that breach of duty of care the defendant has suffered certain neglect because of which the okay the messages has come up let me let me let me just uh, Close the message because uh, it sometimes I get uh, you know disturbed. So who is the person who owes a duty of care, and he has breached that duty of care because of him breaching or that because of him breaching his duty of care, the other person has suffered some legal injury. Now that legal per the person who has suffered legal injury is whom, and the whom is the neighbor. So ye case. Donner versus Stevenson में डिसाइड हुआ था सो नाउ अगर अब हमें एज अज एज अ लीगल स्टूडेंट और लेमैन अगर हमें लॉ ऑफ टॉट को समझना है तो बेसिकली लॉ ऑफ टॉट वुड बी दैट वेन एवर देर इज अ ब्रीच ऑफ ड्यूटी ऑफ केयर एंड दैट ब्रीच ऑफ ड्यूटी ऑफ केयर है 
then the law of tort will be attractive i hope that this is clear if if not please either unmute yourself and say or you know just type it out on the message box and i'll try and explain harsh anything you want to add on it or should i proceed further uh the point is that that uh, i just wanted to tell the kids that uh, this particular case is of, uh, is very very important what happens is uh, we uh, sometimes it is asked which of the following is also by known by the name of uh, ginger beer case so uh, that way it is very very important other than other than that a lot of times you see the situation based questions are made on this like some in india, what happens in indian scenarios when some uh, someone is making question over here what they do is the ideally talk about the maggi mein lead nikalana ya is type ka patanjali ke kisi product mein kuch nikalana so all all those articles which uh, which revolve around this particular concepts are important and also what we learned in uh, the last 5 uh, minutes was who is a who is your neighbor very very important concept hard to get but quite easily told uh, told to us by a uh, sir that neighbor is somebody who is affected by your action and a lot of times the questions are asked with respect to this particular point when somebody is boarding the train then um, he pushes someone to that account so in that way uh, read a uh, read in brief about this particular case of tanosh versus stevenson somebody asked whether the law of tort applies in india yes it does uh, uh, over to you sir Okay. Now we'll. So now, as Hush added, I just also add one thing. If you remember that there was a case with respect to dairy milk stacking, that certain kind of you know substance was found in dairy milk or or maggi. So, वो भी जो है ना, that also will be you know if if suppose such a question of that nature comes in the examination, that will be loosely based on Donald versus Stevenson's case. so it's very important that in law of tort you need to understand who is liable to whom that person is liable and why is that person liable if you are able to establish this three who whom and why you will be able to understand ki yahan pe law of tort ki applicability hai ya nahi hai depending upon the situation so now that essentials of the tort based on the donna versus stevenson case only which we have discussed right now is that there must be some act or omission on part of the on part of the defendant and that act or omission should result in legal damage it is very important to understand that the act or omission must we you know must result in legal damage okay just kushal has a question sir which code we have to and acts in india i i didn't get your question if your question is that under law of tort which code you have to approach then you will have to approach the civil code and which act in india then the law of tort the law of tort you will your remedy will be available in law of tort itself if you are talking about law of tort question dhanraj has a question my neighbor tree is coming over my land and house what is the remedy for me if your labors tree is coming in your land and it is causing you know a loss of enjoyment of your property then it will come under nuisance we'll see nuisance as a separate tort okay so now essentials of tort there must be some act or omission on part of the defendant the act or omission should result in legal damage that is violation of legal right vested in the plaintiff now for example a publishes a statement defaming a person it is a tort why because a should not have published any wrong false defamatory statement against b if a has done it he is liable for defamation a enters the house of b without b's permission a will not be held responsible for trespass because b had not given a the permission to enter his house so there has been an omission of the act which a should not have done in ordinary course of nature and because of which a legal injury has been suffered by b so wahan pe tort arise hota hai now kushal again has sir civil sir in case of nuisance as it is criminal So nuisance again can be civil as well as criminal. 
but let me kushal discuss nuisance in detail and then let me take this question for you it will be more easy abhishek thus cases of motor vehicle act comes under law of torts motor vehicle act has a separate separate provisions so again there can be certain actions as per motor vehicle you know uh, in motor vehicle act which can also be a part of tort law in that situation you will have to choose your remedy whether you want to proceed under motor vehicles act or you want to seek remedy under tort but if there is a specific remedy provided for a specific offence then you one should always go to the specific remedy okay uh not two concepts which we have discussed we'll see i am writing those concept for you injuria sine damnum also somewhat is known as injuria sine damnum and the another concept damnum sine injuria so injuria i am writing it injuria means so there are two concepts injuria sine damnum and damnum sine injuria now let us see the first concept which is injuria sine damnum which means injuria means infringement of right conferred on law on the plaintiff sine means absence of damnum means substantial harm so when there has been a violation of legal right and the same has not been coupled with damage to the plaintiff the plaintiff can still go to court of law because and seek remedy so basically ye bola ja raha hai ki agar aapka legal right ka violation hua hai but the violation of your legal right has not resulted into any tangible damage as such even then you have a remedy under law of tort बिकॉज लॉ ऑफ टॉट क्या कहता है एक्ट और ओमिशन जिसका ब्रीच रिजल्ट इन लीगल डैमेज सो दैट हैज हैपन सो यू कैन सीक रेमेडी अंडर लॉ ऑफ टॉट द एग्जाम्पल विच हर्ष हैड कोटेड अलियर दैट वॉज एशवाई वर्सेज वाइट का केस इन दिस केस द प्लेटिव वॉज अ क्वालिफाइड वोटर एट अ पार्लियामेंटरी इलेक्शन बट अ डिपेंडेंट अ रिटर्निंग ऑफिसर रॉन्गफुली रेफ्यूज टू take plaintiff's vote theek okay, hai so ashwai was the plaintiff white was the defendant ashwai was a qualified and a bona fide voter he went to cast his vote white who was the officer for some reason whatsoever did not allow ashwai to cast his vote as a result of which ashwai could not cast his vote Later on, Ashwai Ashwai filed a case against White for violating his legal right. Now, the plea taken by White was that I should not be held liable under law of tort because no injury as such has been suffered by Ashwai because the candidate to whom Ashwai wanted to vote has has already won the election. So even if Ashwai would have voted or not vote. or would not have voted the result would not have been affected so ashwai did not actually suffer any kind of tangible damage but the court said ki no even if the candidate to him to whom ashwai wanted to vote won the election still the right to vote which is the legal right of ashwai was violated and because of which you know because of which a legal remedy under law of tort lies for ashwai so basically the case law tries to explain here is that that if there is a breach or omission sorry if there is an omission or an act which has breached someone's legal right then a remedy under law of tort is provided any doubt in this if someone can write it on the message box if not then i will proceed to in damnum sine injuria so now in damnum sine injuria kya hota a substantial loss has been suffered but there has been no violation of legal right as such but this we will try to understand by another 
another landmark case, which is Gloucester Grammar School case. Now, what had happened in this case was that there was a primary school which was running and the school was doing very good business. After a while, another competitor opened a school in front of the same, in front of the previous school. And, you know, lured the parents and the students and started giving some kind of offers because of which the new admission started happening in the new school. And even some students of the old school started uh, going to the new school. Now the old school challenged this in the court and said that because of the new school coming in the vicinity, we are suffering economic loss, we are suffering damages and therefore the, the other school should be stopped from carrying out business activities. Now in this case, it was held that don't, yes, it was recognized that yes, because of coming of a new school, adjoining school, excuse me, in the same vicinity, damages is being suffered, but that damage is not of legal nature. So therefore there is no remedy under law of thought, which means that there is a substantial law suffered, but there is no violation of legal right. And since there is no violation of legal right, there is no remedy under thought. So the takeaway from injuria sine damnum and damnum sine injuria should be that if and if, uh, if and only if there has been a violation of legal injury because of the omission or the act, only then a remedy under law of thought will be provided. Otherwise, there will be no remedy under law of thought. So this is in nutshell the introduction to thought as in the word thought has been derived from the Latin term totem which means twisted or a civil wrong. We have seen the difference between a civil wrong and a criminal wrong. We have studied the def definition of thoughts. We did the case of Donald versus Stevenson in which we decided who, whom and why someone will be held liable under law of thought. We have studied the concept of neighbor. We have seen the essentials which are required in a tort law. We have studied damnum sine injuria and injuria sine damnum. And we have finally we have concluded that whenever there is a violation of a legal right because of the breach of an act or duty, then law of thought will come into picture. So this is the brief basic introduction to the law of thought. If there is any doubt with respect to what we have discussed, please confine yourself to what we have discussed as of now. If there is any doubt, please let me know. And if not, then we'll try and proceed with general defenses in thought. Harsh, would you want to add something to this? Uh, no, sir. It, uh, it has basically covered all the basics. Uh, when we talk about this particular concept of basics of thought, you have told us all any the areas. You have told us all the areas in which the questions are asked in law and examination. So, so we can proceed should ahead. Should we proceed to general defenses in thought? Ah uh, yes, sir. But we should uh, we should try to uh, do it in a very uh, short span of time. Uh, am I audible? Yes, you are. Now, Abhishek, your doubt: China has breached contract with India. It is again. Yahan pe international law bhi play me aayega. So, I, the doubt is not very relevant to the current uh, session. Okay, great. So now we just start with general defenses in thought. Now, which puja, which case law name? I'll just write for injuria, sine, damnum or damnum as by versus why damno sine injuria uh, sir, I would request you that if we could just uh, take the general defenses topic in a sum uh, in a summarized version. Uh, I will take your question in a while. Okay. Now, general defenses in thought, let me just briefly summarize it for you. Uh, general defenses, uh, so see, when a plaintiff 
has filed a case against the defendant then obviously we need to also have certain remedies for the defendant as in the defendant should also be in a position to put forth this case so if a plaintiff can sue a defendant for a tort even in such cases there are general defenses available to the defendant to avoid liability so if a who is the plaintiff has sued b who is the defendant the defendant b will have certain general defenses which will and if his case falls within those general defenses then he will have he will have an option of avoiding his liability so in law of tort generally there are eight types of general defenses which are voluntary non fit injuria plaintiff the wrong doer inevitable accident act of god private defense mistake necessity statutory authority these are broadly the eight types of general defenses which can be taken by the defendant and if is and if the case of the defendant is quietly falls within these eight general defenses then the defendant can be you know can avoid his liability now specific the certain specific torts might also have certain specific defenses in addition to these eight general defenses so these eight general defenses are almost available to all specific torts now let now let us take one defense at a time the first is voluntary non fit injuria now again it is a latin phrase which means to a willing person injury is not done for example suppose if you have gone to watch a horse race or a bull race so you know that if you are going to watch a bull race there is a probability that the bull might go crazy and can attack you know someone who is watching the someone who is in the audience so if that happens the organizers will not be held liable because that is the harm which is a probable harm and to that probable harm you have consented another example could be that you went to a fair and you sat in that giant you know roundabout now by someone who has fear of height or someone you know who gets dizzy in a in a in a circular motion pukes so now that person cannot ask for compensation from the roundabout owner in tort saying that i have suffered injury because of you no because it is a common understanding that if you are sitting in a roundabout it will run in a circular motion and moving in a circular motion can con can cause dizziness dizziness so in that situation the defendant will be free from any liability he can avoid his liability because the person has himself consented to undertake that amount of risk another example could be that you went to you went to see a cricket match the player shot the ball and you know the ball hit someone in the head so wahan pe you cannot sue the cricketer for causing injury to you because it's a common understanding that if you are going to watch a match it might cause it, it is a probability that the ball might hit someone in the audience so wahan pe you have consented to that harm and it, when you have consented to the harm and as a result of your consent to the harm you, you have suffered injury then there will be no liability for the defendant the defendant can avoid this liability but only to the extent you have consented the harm and not to the extent of you have not to the extent beyond it for example you have gone to watch the cricket match so you have consented to the harm of being hit by the ball maybe but not to the harm that the ceiling above you falls on your head so there is a difference ki aap ko kitna usi amount of harm ke liye liable मतलब फिर डिपेंडेंट लाइबल नहीं होगा जितना अमाउंट के लिए आपने कंसेंट किया है अगर उससे ज्यादा हार्म हुआ है तो फिर तो फिर डिपेंडेंट की लाइबिलिटी अराइज होगी सो व्हेन यू इनवाइट समवन टू योर हाउस यू कैन नॉट सू दैट पर्सन फॉर ट्रेसपास व्हेन अ प्लेयर इज प्लेइंग क्रिकेट एंड द बॉल हिट्स अ स्पेक्टेटर ड्यूरिंग द गेम देयर इज नो टॉट 
because the play, because the spectator has consented to the arm. Uh, now, for like, let's see Goodridge. This there is a case. I write the name of the case for you. Goodridge versus Summer. So Goodridge was a photographer taking pictures at a horse show. One horse galloped furiously, and Goodridge fell down in the horse course after being frightened. It was held in this case that this summer that the that the horse race uh, horse race organizers were not held liable because it was a probability that if someone is going to watch a horse race, there is a there is, there is, it might be a one percent probability, if not hundred percent, that the person might suffer some injury. So there are various case laws: Lakshmi Ranjan versus Malad Hospital Limited, Go Water versus. Raleigh Regis Court, Smith versus Baker, Haynes versus Harvard. So these cases, maybe I will share it with Harsh. He will share the notes with you, and uh, you know it will uh, help you uh, understand uh, the concepts even better. Moving on to the next defense, which is plaintiff the wrongdoer. Now this is based on the legal legal uh, maxim, which I am writing it for you. Ex tapai causa. Non alter actio, which means from an immoral cause, no action arises. So, plaintiff the wrongdoer is based on the Latin term ex turpi causa non auditor actio, which means from an immoral cause no action arises. Basically, in a very layman sense, it means that no court will aid a person who formed his cause of action upon himself, immoral or illegal act. For example, if someone trespassed a land, so the person who has trespassed the land has already committed a legal wrong. So, if a person has already committed a legal wrong, then that person cannot seek any remedy under law of fraud. Like, for example, a bridge under uh, a bridge was under control of a, of Mr. B, and he had a signboard that overloaded trucks above five tons were not allowed over the bridge. Despite the notice, the plaintiff took an overloaded truck. Which was more than five five tons over the bridge, which led to the collapse of the bridge, and the plaintiff suffered injury. It was held that the plaintiff is himself the wrongdoer because he was already warned not to cross the bridge with a load more than five tons. But the plaintiff did it. So when the plaintiff has himself done something wrong, then why will someone else compensate the plaintiff? मेरी गलती है तो मेरी गलती के लिए कोई मुझे क्यों Compensate करे. Suppose if Mr. X is not studying for CLAT examination, is not preparing for CLAT examination, because of which Mr. X could not clear CLAT examination, then then why should Mr. Y, Z, A, B, C should bear the consequences of Mr. X not putting in effort? Because it was Mr. X's fault. So if it is your fault, you are liable. No one else will be liable on your behalf. This is what is meant by the general defense of plaintiff the wrong doer another third point is inevitable accident i n e v i t a b e l inevitable accident now an inevitable accident is basically an unexpected injury resulting from something that cannot be foreseen and avoided by a reasonable man in spite of reasonable care on the part of the defendant so for example i'll write a case law here one case law i will just discuss stanley versus powell what had happened in this case was that 
they were the members of a shooting party and they went for peasant killing now powell filed sorry powell uh, fired at a bird but shot from the gun hit and glanced off the oak tree and injured sandley so basically the defendant was trying to shoot a bird but somehow the bullet hit the tree and bounced back and caused injury to stanley so it was held that it was a case of inevitable accident and not a tort because there was no intention to cause injury to stanley also all necessary precautions were taken to shoot the bird and not mr stanley so this was this was this is this is a situation wherein in spite of the best efforts and best care due care something and you know some accident happens which could not have been avoided so ye hota hai inevitable accident ek aur case karte hain is mein homes versus mathur so mathurs horses were on a public highway they became startled by barking of a dog which resulted in an accident it was held in this case it was held that it was an inevitable accident and hence no liability arose for the accident because see i the person was taking his horse the horse was tied to a chariot everything was very proper the horse was trained but now all of a sudden because of sudden thing sudden shouting of a dog the horse got excited or started confused and because of which the horse started running here and there and caused injury to someone so here that was not it was not something which was planned it was it was an inevitable accident and since it was an accident which could not have been avoided they the defense can be taken by mathur here who is the defendant is it clear okay now the fourth defense which is very important is act of god which is also known as vis major now see act of god is very important why because if you see in the covid 19 pandemic situation okay what had happened is that lot of businesses are going are suffering huge economic loss now if you would have read in media reports that inox cineplex etc which run their you know sh shows in in multiplexes were not able to pay the rent and they invoke the vis majore clause saying that it is an act of god something which is beyond human control which is which is a kind of a natural disaster and because of which we are not in a position to fulfill the obligations of the contract though that is with respect to the contract law if we if you do contract law uh, this concept will will uh, will be clear for you even better but after what is really important hai abhi because pandemic situation jo ki covid 19 ke karan se arise hua hai wahan pe this major clause ke bare mein bahut zyada discussion ho rahi hai to agar 2021 mein agar koi clat likhta hai ya 2020 mein likhta hai ya 2022 mein likhta hai to this major pe koi article exam mein place ho sakta hai you need to be very much aware so act of god is also known as vis major it is also known as force major so it says that it is an in it is basically an inevitable accident but here the inevitable accident has been caused because of an act of god that is because of an act of nature which is beyond the control of human for example earthquake heavy rainfall these all constitute act of god now because of extremely heavy rainfall suppose ampan aaya in odisha because of which a building collapsed and people died so the building owner tha jisne building banaya hai wo negligence ke liye liable nahi hoga kyun nahi liable hoga because the collapse of the building was because of act of god so this is what this is the defense of act of god 
uh, on the point of act, act of god uh, sir so am i audible from vn that please marshland case ko elaborate kiya jaye so there were some embankments on the lakes which was you know near a bridge embankment a bridge was made a bridge was constructed over over a lake and embankments were made because of extreme heavy rainfall the embankments broke which resulted in flood so it was said that it is an act of god and marshland which who had constructed the embankments will not be held liable i hope bn this is clear for you now the fifth defense is private defense now private defense is again you will it, it is a it is you will find that private defense is also a general defense in law of crimes as well so private defense is also known as self defense the law permits use of reasonable force to protect one's persons or property but the force should not be used excessively it should be used in proportion to the damage or loss apri and so suppose a strike b with a blow so and then b kills a with a sword so ye proportionate force ka use nahi hai but agar a ne b pe ek blow diya aur us blow se bachne ke liye a ne b pe blow diya aur us blow se bachne ke liye b ne a ka haath roka तो वो प्राइवेट डिफेंस होगा अगर हम प्राइवेट डिफेंस ले रहे हैं और उसमें अगर हम किसी की ब्रिच ऑफ किसी को हम इंजुरी प्रोवाइड करते हैं तो फिर वो टॉट में डिफेंस का काम करेगा ओके दे इज अ क्वेश्चन बाय फोर सिंगल सर व्हाट इफ द ओनर वाज अवेयर दैट द बिल्डिंग इज नॉट स्ट्रॉन्ग एंड इज प्रोन टू फॉलिंग बिफोर द एक्ट ऑफ गॉड है can he say that god made his building fall or will he still be held liable for negligence now this is a very interesting question very interesting question of course now suppose if the building collapsed because of extremely heavy rainfall or earthquake or flood or situations like that us situation mein to prove that the building was already uh, you know weak and the foundation was not as strong is very difficult and also would have been seen ki whether in the ordinary course of situation circumstances whether the building would have collapsed or not so this this question will need to be asked if if if, if the conclusion comes that even if even in a ordinary course of situation where there was no heavy rainfall no heavy wind no storm no earthquake the building would collapse so in situation mein negligence ke liye constructor ko liable thahraya ja sakta hai but the quantum of the punishment or the quantum of compensation which will be asked him to uh, which will be asked him to pay would be very meager it will be very less but again to prove will become a challenge at the same time he can he will have a very strong case and under act of god general defense arpur bhai said thank you sir pleasure and pita has said thank you so much sir you were teaching amazing pleasure glad i find of some help to you uh, i will consider it as a privilege now now we'll see mistake as a defense mistake is generally known defense in law court and mistake ka concept pata hai mistake ka concept jo hai na ye contract mein bahut acche se clear hoga do tarah ke mistake hote hain mistake of law or mistake of fact अगर मिस्टेक ऑफ लॉ है नो रेमेडी इज प्रोवाइडेड मिस्टेक ऑफ फैक्ट है रेमेडी इज प्रोवाइडेड बट इन टॉट मिस्टेक जो है उसको रिलेटेड रेमेडी एज सच प्रोवाइड नहीं किया जा सकता है नो नेसेसिटी अगेन इट इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एंड आई लिंक इट लिंक इट विद द कोविड 19 सिचुएशन अगेन नो सपोज एन एक्ट हैज बीन डन आउट ऑफ नेसेसिटी मजबूरी में या यू नो द नीड ऑफ द आवर इज सच that the uh, act needs to be performed then then such act is known as necessity for example like you know our building near to my house is on fire okay now in another suppose the building is constructed in a manner that wahan se agar hum you know if i am trying to uh, throw water on it or the fire people are throwing the water on it or for so those substances to stop the fire and it raises plumes okay and because of that plume 
इफ समन इनहेल्स दैट फ्लूम हु इज अ नेबर जिसके घर में आग नहीं लगी है घर किसी और के घर में आग लगी है बट हम जब उस आग को बुझा रहे हैं तो उसे जो स्मोक निकल रहा है उस स्मोक को किसी और ने इनहेल कर दिया तो क्या वो पर्सन के लिए फायर पीपल विल बी हेल्ड लाइबल नो दे विल नॉट बी हेल्ड लाइबल बिकॉज द फायर पीपल वर्ड एक्टिंग अंडर नेसेसिटी ठीक यहाँ पे एक और एग्जाम्पल हम कर सकते हैं कि फॉर एग्जाम्पल यू नो अ पर्सन वॉज बींग अटैक बाई अ डॉग आई वेंट टू सेव दैट पर्सन एज अ रिजल्ट ऑफ विच आई वॉज अटैक बाई द डॉग बट अदर पर्सन विल नॉट जिसको हम बचाने के कहते हैं Sorry, sorry. This sorry. I'm sorry. This should not be a proper example in this case. Uh, this will be an example of rescue operation. We'll do it. You know. Sorry, I just. Uh, uh, I'll give you another example, a better example. For example, there was a ship, okay, and there were two people on board, and some carriage was also on. Like, man, lo, bill, rakne do ka crew hai. Ship pe ja rahe hain. Ship mein log hain. कैरियज है एनिमल्स है वॉट एवर बहुत सारे सामान है अब अचानक से स्टॉर्म आ गया ठीक है तो कैप्टन ऑफ द शिप डिसाइडेड इन ऑर्डर टू सेव द लाइफ ऑफ द पीपल वी विल हैव टू लाइट एन द वेट ऑफ द शिप नॉ इन ऑर्डर टू लाइट एन देट ऑफ द शिप द कैप्टन ऑफ द शिप हैड नो अदर ऑप्शन बट टू थ्रो सटेन कैरियज आउट ऑफ द शिप ठीक है तो इन ऑर्डर टू प्रिवेंट द लॉस ऑफ लाइफ so here the captain was acting as per the necessity to save the life of the people so ab jo damage hua carriage jo bhi jab jo ki water mein feka gaya uske karan se jo loss ho suffer kiya gaya hoga us loss ke liye captain of the ship liable nahi hoga because the captain of the ship was acting under necessity so if a person is acting under necessity then in that situation that person will not be held liable i think we with the example of the fire fire example case or the captains uh, of the ship case this concept should be clear now last defense is statutory authority that if the law permits or if the statute or an act gives a person an special authority to act in a particular manner to so fit for that act that person will not be held liable for example a police officer can enter your house and arrest you so for that if a police officer has a warrant to enter your house and arrest you in that situation the police officer will not be held liable for trespass because he is acting under a statutory he is doing an statutory act an act which is given which which has been allowed by law which is which is allowed by you know police manual to wo kar raha hai maan lo ki koi kisi ka property ko demolish nahi kar sakta hai but if there is an order to demolish a building not that order has come from the municipality so that is a statutory act which is being carried by an a statutory authority so us situation mein the person who is demolishing the building will will have a defense and that person will not be held liable under law of tort so this is this is in general eight defenses in law of tort so we have done what is law of tort we have seen the difference we have seen injuria sine and damnum damnum sine injuria we have done the eight uh, general defenses of law of tort we have done certain landmark cases we have seen couple of things in land in, in you know in the light of covid 19 situation as well relating it to the current situation if there are any doubts please ask them to me even even harsh can help me you know address your queries uh so i hope you are getting my voice yes harsh okay uh, so uh, uh, that that has been an amazing session till now you have ideally covered everything which is asked in law and you have uh, you have already covered a lot of uh, topics which are asked in law and examinations now abhishek has a question who will be liable for punishment and compensation if a tried to trespass on the first floor of b and due to old floor it got broken and the person tried to trespass will get captured so plaintiff the wrong doer so who is plaintiff the wrong doer plaintiff the wrong doer will be wahan pe defense mil jayega 
In R versus Julian Stephens, taught under law of God, is the cannibalism case where they took the defense of necessity. So in that case, the court had said that the killing of the child should not have happened. वहाँ पे कोर्ट ने उसको नेसेसिटी में कंसीडर नहीं किया था। सो गाइस, आई थिंक लॉ टॉट इन इटसेल्फ इज नॉट अ वेरी स्मॉल टॉपिक व्हिच कैन बी यू नो कवर्ड इन वन सेशन। इफ यू आर विलिंग, आई वुड लव टू होल्ड मोर सेशंस विद यू एंड ट्राइ टू गिव यू एस मच इनसाइट्स एस पॉसिबल विद रिस्पेक्ट which will help you in the examination if i, uh, I you know and uh, harsh is there if you need, you can take my contact details from him as well and if there is any question you can personally get in touch with me via harsh i will try to help you more and more far to you all the best uh, thank you kumar veshran rangun for giving a wonderful compliment or uh, you know it has made my day it is a pleasure teaching young aspirants and you know the reason why because when i was preparing for clat when way back in 2009 because i had taken a drop and in 2010 i gave my clat examination they were hardly institute they were hardly platforms like law seco they were hardly people like harsh you know who would try and coordinate and get you know best people of the industry and facilitate people you know in in such a beautiful manner so it was very it was huge struggle back then but now that you know we are in certain Position of privilege, I think it is the right way to you know give back to the young aspirants. And someday I look forward to you arguing in front of me against me in court. And uh, at that time, please don't expect any mercy. I'll be a brutal. I'll be very brutal, and you are also allowed to be brutal to me at that point of time. But yes, I would really want. All of you to crack flat, get into best of the best national universities, perform very well, and one day if possible, we will, you know, I and Harsh will take a session together and give you an insight of life at a law school. You know, the life at a law school is very different than a life at an engineering college or a medical school. It is much more interesting, I would say, and it's a very nice learning curve and evaluation. So. You know, thank you, people, for all the wonderful comment. Thank you, Pooja. Thank you, Abzara. Thank you, Nayan. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. So we'll fix up another session and we'll get back to you again. Yes, we will.